Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share a project with you using the Birch Press Designs String Art Circle Collage Die. And it does look like a circle and like it would cut out a circle, but it actually kind of cuts a window into your card. Uh, so I've taken, um, I've run that through my die cut machine and now I'm going to ink blend some additional colors onto this colored cardstock. Uh, this is from a 6x6 pad. Um, I will have it linked below, but I just used some broken china and some prize ribbon just to make it look like an ombre. Uh, it matches the, the actual color of cardstock fairly well, and it just um, gives it an ombre look. At least I think it does. Um, I really went into this planning to make one card and you'll see that I end up making three. Um, this one was super simple and it just got my creative juices flowing. So I figured I might as well um, keep going. So I will show you all of that. Here I took my panel and just kind of marked out where that center circle is cut out and I'm going to go ahead and stamp um, this little tiny hello and this is from the Rainbow Days Lingo stamp set. And I'm just going to pop that up and adhere it down. There is a foam adhesive on the back of the entire panel. But I didn't uh, brace the center part at all. So I'm going to take some multi-matte medium. And I'm going to just glue that little lip down the very um, edge of the die cut there. It'll add some interesting texture. Uh, it'll keep the card very flat. But it adds that layer of, of dimension because of the foam tape. And then to kind of reinforce the ombre effect, I took these fairy jewels by um, Open Studio here, and I will also have these linked below. I used both the brights and the pastel set, and I'm going to use the three different colors of blue, and I'm going to go ahead and put an ombre of blue jewels inside the three rows that are on the outside of this die. Uh, there are like five rows of die cuts from the center and the outer three are large enough to carry off one of these jewels just fine and at first I was going to set them like down in the bottom corner of each of the spaces and then I decided to just center them in each of the spaces and I liked that much better um, so then I was able to uh, adhere these darker blue ones the lighter blue ones that are also on the brights and then like I said I also pulled in the pastel set and used the light blue that is on there and I filled in all of the spaces all the way around you can see here I'm adding some of that light blue but I filled them all the way around and then when I got to kind of had you know, um, most of what I wanted on the card then I filled in like the other area so you can see here with the lightest blue I kind of started in the middle of this gap. I wanted to see how much of each color I wanted uh, to see if I needed to add more of the dark blue or more of the light blue to this very pale blue so that it was kind of even. I don't know if you can tell what I'm talking about, but I just uh, was trying to make these three colors of gems even on the card front or it, close to it so it didn't look like it was unbalanced uh, and had more of let's say the dark blue versus the light blue. So I just kind of uh, pieced it together like this and I thought this was a beautiful card. And then I was like, you know, that was really fun to ink blend and I decided that I was feeling a little fall. So I would pull in a rainbow, but kind of a deeper fall rainbow. And I decided to ink blend because don't get me wrong, Die cutting is fun, but distress inks, like the distress oxide inks, blend so nicely that it's fun. It's fun. I never understood why people think it's fun, um, but it is, it's fun. <laughs> so I started with the yellow that I'm using, um, which is actually kind of an orangey yellow. It's wild honey. And now I'm going to add the green. I wanted to start with the yellow so that my yellow didn't disappear. Uh, you'll see here that I make sure that I go back and forth between the colors and really blend them well. Um, <laughs> Distress oxides to me are kind of like, you know, when you want to paint a room and you could just put the paint on the wall, but then it might take 
four coats to get the coverage you want. But if you put that primer down, it might you might get it done in one. I feel like it's simplest simplistically distress oxides are just like paint and primer in one. <laughs> That's why you can get them to work on dark colored cardstock, and that's why they blend so nicely. So I put the green, the uh, Rustic Wilderness down, and then I added the Dusty Concord, and then I'm going to go in between with that prize ribbon. That way I don't blend off too far to the end, so I lose my purple, and that way I don't overtake my green. So there was a space kind of between where I put the blue and the purple and like the blue and the green and I'm going back in see here with the green um, the rustic wilderness I'm going back in and blending that so that I don't lose that strip of green and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to blend these until the blue and the purple become an additional color in between the blue and the green become an additional color between the green and the yellow and so on not just a color up against it and then you stop and I was cleaning my glass mat along the way because I didn't want to contaminate anything. So here I'm going to do the same thing. That yellow, uh, I have an orange and a red that need to go beyond the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the red that I'm using, which is aged mahogany. And then um, this is the new uh, crackling campfire this orange that I'm using and I just went in and kind of split the difference and put it in there and blended everything and you can see um, how it's several colors now it's not just one set of colors um, or not just stripes and I laid out the dye that I wanted to use uh, the string art collage dye and I ran that through my machine I put some purple tape on it after I ran it through to hold all the pieces in because I put little pieces of foam tape on those larger places. The same places that we put the jewels on the other one, those spaces are big enough to have a piece of foam tape on them. So that's what I did. Yeah, it took a while. It was totally worth it, um, 100%. Uh, you can see here when I'm peeling off that purple tape, a couple of those tiny little pieces came off and I made sure I saved those because I will use them. I didn't want uh, to lose them. Um, so now that the, the piece is stuck down, there's foam tape behind those larger pieces and I'm going to carefully peel the card panel off of those negative spaces. And it's just those three rows that's first going to be stuck. The center isn't stuck at all. Um, it's just those three rows. And, and this is a really fun way to get like a two for one if you're using a background die even. Put foam tape on part of it. Um, don't put foam tape on the rest of it so you can pull off the positive from the negative and um, you have something for two cards. So here I just um, made sure that those were all stuck down and I could have left it like that but what I chose to do is add just it some adhesive to those tiny little pieces and I'm going to um, turn this over on top of the center design that it cuts out and then I'll push those through and make sure I line everything up and replace those two little pieces that are stuck on my piece of tape so that I can complete the design and I'm being very careful with the adhesive I don't want it to get on the actual panel itself because I don't want to stick that part down so here I just uh, took my time and poked those all through so that they would be stuck and then peeled that back off and now I'm going to add my center circle back in and you can see how I have the positive and the negative. For this positive piece I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some water on there. I also did some drops of some um, uh, what is that stuff called? shimmer spray and then I spritzed it as well so there is some shine to this in real life here I'm doing that and then I did give it a spritz after I had put drops on there just to kind of add a little bit of shimmer pick that up and added a little bit more detail to my card panel now I also cut out two additional pieces of white cardstock. I adhered my, my frame die that I used in the center together and kind of made a uh, template and I cut out a few more panels and I just stacked those up just to add a little bit of dimension. I wanted, uh, I didn't want this to sit flat on my card base. 
and that one is going to be on black. So here I have stamped, I'm taking care of all my sentiments. So I stamped um, hello and um, um, a, another sub sentiment, uh, I'm so proud of you. And then now I'm going to stamp this sentiment directly on this card panel. And this will take care of the sentiments for these two cards. I popped up part of the proud of you and then, you know, adhered it across the, the parts that are popped up here on this one panel and that will complete that panel. This other panel here, I'm going to mount on some black cardstock and it's thick because it's the two layers of white and then on with the, the ink blended layer on the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that to my panel. see how pretty that is. It's so pretty. And then I die cut just part of the hello um, without any stamping that's going to be in the center in that like hollow in the center of the design in the circle. The E and the LL, I kind of just trim those off of those die cuts and I'm going to go ahead and place that underneath this part of the die and it'll help um, so that it doesn't sag in the middle at all. Um, there's a little bit of dimension on this card but it's not a ton of dimension, um, but it's enough that if it was going through a mail processing unit, it would uh, probably squish it. So we want to reinforce that. And uh, this is a really nice way to do it. No foam tape, just a little bit of extra cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and place that in the center here, right across the center of my uh, string art circle collage die. I do love that this is a window and it's not an actual piece. I can think of tons of other ways to use it. This was just three. I was kind of impressed that it inspired me to keep going. I like that when products products can do that. So these are the three cards that we've made today. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you check out Birch Press Designs blog. I'll have that linked below as well as all of the products used. And as I always say, give cards generously. Bye.